Hi, this is Teddy. Today's episode is about West Virginia. Here are some facts about West Virginia. The capital and largest city is Charleston. West Virginia is ranked 41st by area and 38th by population with 1.8 million people. The governor of West Virginia is Republican Jim Justice. The senators are Democrat Joe Manchin and Republican Shelley Moore, Moore Capito. West Virginia sends three representatives to the U.S. House of Representatives, all Republicans. Bye. Hi everyone, this is Kelly with Two Broads Talking Politics. Today we're talking about the politics of West Virginia, and I have here with me Jennifer Bryant, who is active with Indivisible Wood County. Hi Jennifer. Hello. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So to set the stage a little bit, could you tell us a little bit about where in West Virginia you live and how you got involved in Indivisible? Sure. Aside from three years when we left the state for training for my husband's employment, I've lived in West Virginia my entire life. I'm from the southern part of the state in the coal fields, but I currently live in Parkersburg. It's a town in central West Virginia along the Ohio River. We've lived here for four years, and it's a pretty conservative town. So (laughs) for the first couple years, I felt like I was just floundering, being a little more progressive than most of my neighbors. After the 2016 elections, more of us started to coalesce and Wood County Indivisible was formed and we we do activism in our county surrounding issues and things, as well as I'm active with several other groups that are similar in nature. So I'm trying to get a sense for West Virginia politics. It seems like it was democratic, maybe not progressive, but democratic for a long time until fairly recently. But now it seems like one of the most Republican states in the country. Is that your read on on what's been going on? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Like I said, I'm from the southern part of the state, coal country. Labor unions were huge in West Virginia just a few decades ago with the Increased implementation of mechanism within the coal industry, you know, fewer miners are needed to do the same amount of mining. So jobs started disappearing. And sad as it is, conservatives are really good at billing that, you know, as liberals are trying to tear down the industry when in fact, really, it's just the ebb and the flow of the way things go. Natural gas has now, you know, had a major increase in our state in the last decade. And a lot of those jobs even are um, outsiders. You know, they're, they're driving in from the Midwest. And so the people who were the bedrock of that Democratic Party back in its heyday, I unfortunately have either passed away or you know, moved on trying to find work. And the there's a large portion of West Virginians who are just kind of tapped out of politics. And just like everywhere else, I think. I guess it's a, it's a wave, I guess. It's probably that way most places. But I've only lived here, so I can only speak to it here. Well, and up until very recently, West Virginia had a Democratic governor. <laughs> you still have the same governor. He's just not a Democrat anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> he wasn't a Democrat ever. Let's be clear on that. Governor Justice was a Republican who turned Democrat and ran. And unfortunately, state party leadership really got on board with him. I think they saw in him a possibility to, you know, to elect a Democrat, which they did. <laughs> <laughs> but we got paid back for, for that. Pretty quickly. He's a billionaire, businessman. Nothing about his policies or positions ever really 
I don't feel like he made any major change. He just went and changed a D to an R. (laughs) (laughs) I think a lot of people in the, at least in the progressive side, really kind of saw that coming. Um, But the center Dems really, you know, bought into his candidacy and, and the promises that he made. And unfortunately it, it ended up the way it did. So now we're, you know, we have two years and, uh, we'll find a better candidate for next. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am committed to that, that we won't, we'll run a better candidate. Well, and speaking of candidates, West Virginia has one of the Senate races that everyone in the country is looking pretty closely at a Democrat who, you know, is, is centrist, <laughs> moderate Democrat. What is, what is your read on, on that on the ground is, is Manchin popular? Is he, is he, do you think he's likely to be reelected? I don't want to like it into a, you, uh, to a car salesman, but he's, <laughs> he's a very, he's a very good politician. You know, he, he's able to connect with voters. You know, if you see him out at, you know, a fair, a festival or, you know, somewhere where he's engaging with, with voters, he, he does that well. And, despite my disagreements with him on, on votes and things that he's done in the past few years, because I do feel like he's, he's moved much more center than I would have liked him to. And even center right in some cases, I do, I do feel like he is a West Virginian and, and he has that in his heart. And I just continue to hope that at some point he realizes that he doesn't have to play that center quite so hard. But, you know, like you said, our state has moved right. So I think he's trying to figure out where he sits in that, just like most candidates are. So the the state moved right. But what does it feel like on the ground right now? What kind of interest is there around Indivisible and groups like that? It seems like there's a lot of Democrats running for office in the state legislature. But I don't know, you know, what, what kind of traction they're getting. You know, I mean, on the ground, I feel like, you know, there is a movement growing lately in our town and the Republican, the local county Republican Party posted about it. And I think it had five likes at last look. But, you know, when when Indivisible posts something on social media or when we have an action, you know, we we get a lot of people. Uh, There's an amendment on the ballot this fall in November to add an amendment to the state constitution that would prevent women having the right to an abortion. And they tried to have a rally downtown in in Wood County and they had to pay protesters to come from out of state (laughs) because they couldn't (laughs) find protesters. So as much as, the trend has been to go right. I actually feel like the left is gaining momentum and and we're gaining a foothold. And and I really feel like we're, we're going to be back on top before people realize what's happened. (laughs) Or at least I'm hoping. (laughs) (laughs) And there's a lot of women running for office in West Virginia this year. Yeah, Mountain Mamas are trying to take over. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they actually have a Facebook page and um, you know, they're they're coalescing around that. West Virginia I don't really feel like has been as backward as some places on, on women. The labor union movement, this was the foreground for that, you know, a hundred and so years ago. And it was led by a woman. Mother Jones was the leader you know, or, or one of the major leaders in the labor union movement. So we're, we're not used to, to only being led by men. We've had strong female leaders for a long time. So it's, it's refreshing to see this surge of women candidates. He mentioned Kendra Frache. There's Danielle Walker and Stephanie Zucker. And, you know, there, there are a lot of women running for a lot of offices, even on the local level. And I think that's that's a great trend, and I think that's really going to add to that momentum. 
So can you explain a little bit what's going on with the Supreme Court in West Virginia? (laughs) Well, (laughs) it all started with a couch. Not really, but yeah, it kind of did. The the folks who were on the Supreme Court say it nicely, mismanaging funds. A lot of money was misspent on aesthetics in the offices. A very expensive couch, a extremely beautiful but extremely expensive floor was laid in one of the offices. And that was brought out and some of the legislators, you know, started to uh, make a move on that and say, you know, this is this is mismanagement. We have a an, we don't have enough money in our state as it is. <laughs> we definitely don't don't need to be spending money on a fancy couch for an office that really not very many people go to <laughs> anyway. But it ended up I, I don't want to say it backfired because I mean it needed to be brought out and it needed to be dealt with. But then the some folks on the right have now tried to make it so that we just get a whole new Supreme Court and Governor Justice, who we've already discussed is the Republican, now gets to, he appointed two Supreme Court justices to fill the two vacancies that have arisen so far. And those are, of course, white male Republicans, (laughs) Evan Jenkins and Tim Armstead. Tim Armstead was the Speaker of the House, I think. So I think we'll... I don't it's it's all still brewing and I think the leaves are just starting to settle. We've got quite a few candidates who have put their name forward to to take seats on the Supreme Court. I know one named Will Thompson is from Boone County and he's done some really great work with drug court and um, dealing with the opioid epidemic that we're seeing in our state. And so Jeff Kessler was one of the Democrats who ran for the Democratic nomination for governor, and he's put his name in the hat as well. I think there's actually even a woman who's tossed her name in. <laughs> um, so I think we'll just see how that all flushes out. Um, it's still pretty early. People are just starting to really get their names out there, and I don't think there have been any kind of major moves by any groups to, you know, to get behind anybody yet. It's still pretty early. So. Is there Anything else that you want to make sure that people know about West Virginia politics? Well, West Virginians are proud people, and we we kind of get the bum rap quite a bit with a couple of our other Southern state sisters. <laughs> you know, we we've had an a state that's essentially been colonized with with the coal industry and now with natural gas. And I hope to see that, that that moving forward and, you know, with the advent of new solar and wind things coming in, I, I think that the state will start to change. Um, I hope it does because we're losing residents at a alarming rate. But I think that there are enough of us on the ground that are committed to trying to make a difference. And I think people should look out because I think some great things are coming from West Virginia in the next few years. That would be great. I'm from Ohio originally, and so West Virginia was always, you know, sort of the butt of the jokes. But I want to see West (laughs) Virginia really succeed. (laughs) I do, too. All right. And uh, if any of our listeners are in West Virginia and would like to get involved a little bit more in progressive actions, uh, is there a way that they can find out more about what your Indivisible group is doing? Sure. Uh, Wood County Indivisible is on Facebook and Instagram and just reach out to us and let us, you know, let us lead you or, or maybe you can lead us. You know, we're, we're finding that because this is such a ground effort, you know, new people come in to the group all the time and bring new perspectives. And, you know, we're, we're always learning and, and becoming more aware. So it jump in. Now's the time. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And I'm going to be watching out for those mountain mamas on election night. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, do that. It's great. It's great stuff. I'm excited about it. I've had country roads going through my head ever since I learned about the mountain mamas. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
it's so funny because when I travel and uh, somebody says, where are, where are you from? You know, even overseas, I've, I've traveled 